Welcome and thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Margarita Yanas and I am a transcript analyst with the Graduate School Admissions Office. In this presentation, I will be covering how to remove two of the most common holds that may be preventing you from enrolling if this is your first semester with the Graduate School. The first hold that I will address in this presentation is the prior degree verification or PDV hold. So who places the hold? The Graduate School Admissions Office places the hold on your PeopleSoft account. Why is this hold on your student account? All students who accept an offer from UH will be asked to submit official documents before they are eligible to enroll for classes. And then how do you remove the hold from your account? The hold can be removed once you provide proof of attainment of a bachelor, a master, or a doctoral degree. The PDV hold is removed when you provide official hard copy documents to the graduate school showing proof of degree earned. Please note that for students that earn degrees outside of the US, there may be additional documentation that you will need to submit in order to remove the hold. I will touch on this further in a further slide. For the purposes of removing the PDV hold, students who earned a bachelor, a master, a doctoral degree from, the US, from a U.S. institution must submit an official transcript issued by the university showing degree conferral or awarded on the transcript. Hard copies must be sent in a sealed envelope issued by the university. Transcripts can be mailed to the following address. Um, so there are two addresses listed. Either address can work. Um, for the situation. However, I do always recommend to use the PO box since that is our express email uh, mailing address and it is it will be sent more directly to our offices. Um, and then lastly, uh, transcripts can also be sent electronically. So you can uh, request transcripts be delivered to the following address, gradschool at uh.edu or you can mark them to be delivered to UH graduate admissions. This may or may not be an option that your university provides. If you do not see graduate admissions listed, then please have it sent to the address listed above, um, the email address listed above. The graduate school admission option guarantees that the transcript comes directly to our office. So if you choose any other option such as UH admissions, it will take longer to reach us since we will have to reach out to the undergraduate uh, office and we may not be we may not be able to retrieve transcripts that are sent to other campuses such as UH downtown, UH Victoria or UH Clear Lake. So if you earned a degree outside of the US, students who earned a bachelor, a master or a doctoral degree outside of the US will need to submit additional documents to verify their degrees. For most countries, students must submit the following, official transcripts of all semesters attended, a degree certificate or a degree diploma, English translations of your official transcripts, English translations of your degree certificate or your degree diploma. Please note that there are country specific guidelines as well and there may be additional conditions not mentioned. This is all based on the evaluations made by a transcript analyst, and you may be asked to submit further documentation than noted. You can review our website for our country-specific guidelines in the link below. I will also be going some of our more common country-specific guidelines for China, India, and Iran later on in this presentation. I recommend that if you do not see your country on this presentation today, that you visit our website to review our country-specific guidelines. So for international transcripts, international transcripts must be submitted in an envelope sealed and stamped by the issuing university to be considered official. If your university e issues English translations and or attested copies of your documents, such as your degree certificate or mark sheets, uh, they must also be delivered in a signed and sealed envelope. And finally, translations will also be accepted from the college or university that you attended if they do provide those for you. Otherwise, we can also accept Education USA translations 
and translations made by an American Translator Association translator. State approved translators from the country where your degree was earned can also be accepted. So I am going to quickly review um, the additional requirements we have for some of our country specific guidelines. So for students that earned a degree from China, they have to submit the following documents. A transcript of all semesters attended, a graduation certificate, a degree certificate, and English translations for the transcript, the graduation certificate, and the degree certificate. All documents must be issued in a signed and sealed envelope by the issuing university to be considered official, and students can request that the issuing university make attested copies of original documents. If attested copies are provided, they must also be issued to you in a signed and sealed envelope from the issuing university. If you earned a degree from India, so students that earned a degree from India must submit the following. Individual semester or yearly mark sheets from all semesters attended, including all attempts. So this means that we need to see mark sheets for every examination period, whether your university issues individual mark sheets or yearly mark sheets, we have to see those and any attempts, including failed attempts. We also require provisional or a final degree certificate if they have been awarded. Please note, a consolidated mark sheet will not be sufficient for documentation requirements unless you attend an Indian Institute of Technology or a National Institute of Technology. And there may be other, there may be other circumstances where we may accept a consolidated mark sheet um, but in general, these are the requirements that we have for our Indian students. Students can request that the issuing university or autonomous college uh, make attested copies of their original documents. If attested copies are provided, they must be issued in a signed and sealed envelope issued by the university or the autonomous college. And finally, if you earned a degree from Iran, so students who earned a degree from Iran must submit the following documents. Transcripts of all semesters attended, a degree or graduation certificate or diploma, and English translations from the ministry with the stamp from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or Ministry of Justice for the transcript and the degree or graduation certificate. These do not have to be submitted in signed and sealed envelopes since we understand that the ministry translations are issued to students not inside an envelope but please note that if you do um if you do submit these documents you will have to submit the original documents issued to you and we cannot uh, make copies or return those those documents back to you if your university issues transcripts in english such as sheriff university Please be sure that the transcript is in a sign and sealed envelope from, an issuing, from the issuing university. Uh, the transcript must also bear the signature and seal of the issuing university's registrar's office. So there are a couple ways of submitting your official documents. We understand that there may be some documents that we request that cannot be sent if they are issued only once to students. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that in this slide. So how can you submit documents if you earned a degree outside of the US? For, document, uh, for documents that can't be mailed, students can mail their documents to the following addresses. And as I mentioned earlier, the PO Box office uh, mailing uh, address will be the best address to send that to, since it is more direct to us, but either address works. Um, students that may need to submit original documents and do not have the option to request attested copies can meet with the transcript analyst. Certified copies can be made of your original documents, but only by the transcript analyst. And appointments can be made to meet with the transcript analyst by reaching out to schedule an appointment at our grad school at uh.edu help desk. There may be opportunities, please note that there may be opportunities as the semester starts for you to meet with analysts at other events or there may be changes, so it is important to stay connected so that you are aware of the different times and dates that we may be available to meet with students to make certified copies. 
For the fall 2020 semester, we are having to change the way that we meet students due to COVID-19. So please reach out to the graduate school if you have more questions regarding this. We do not, um, so lastly, documents not accepted. So these are, these are a couple of examples of documents not accepted for the purposes of removing a PDB hold. So we cannot accept outside degree evaluations, such as those provided by West, Spantran, or other credential evaluation services. Um, all evaluations are conducted in-house by the graduate school, so we really want to see all those original documents or official documents that we've requested um, to be able to remove that PDV hold. Electronic transcripts or scan of transcripts or degree certificates that via mail cannot be accepted. Um, documents, examples of this might be documents that you uploaded to your application. Um, they do not count as official documents for the purposes of removing the PDV hold from your account. And then official documents issued by a university that are not inside a signed and sealed envelope or loose leaf documents. Um, there may be circum special circumstances for some countries, and then we do ask that you reach out to us if you have questions, but in general, we cannot accept documents outside a uh, sealed envelope as official documents uh, to remove the PDV hold. And then copies of official documents made by students or other universities also cannot be accepted. And documents, copies of documents stamped by a notary can also not also cannot be accepted for the purposes of removing a PDV hold. And the final hold I will be addressing in this presentation is the English profi language proficiency or ELP hold. The English language proficiency or ELP hold. So who places a hold on the account? Again, the Graduate School Admission Office places a hold on your PeopleSoft account. Why is it a hold on your student account? All graduate applicants, regardless of citizenship status, must demonstrate proficiency in English to obtain admissions to the university. And how do you remove the hold from your account? Documents that students upload to their applications are considered for admission purposes only, and the students must submit official proof that they've met the ELP requirements. The hold can, can be removed once the student has provided proof that they've met the ELP requirements by submitting official exam scores. So there are three different kinds of ELP exam scores that can be accepted to remove the ELP hold. Um, the first one is TOEFL, IELTS, and our newest one is Duolingo. How do you submit official exam scores to remove the ELP hold? Um, so there are different ways uh, to submit, submit each of the exam scores listed above. Um, so you have, um, please pay special attention since each of these exam scores must be submitted in a specific way to be considered official. So there's no one way that all these scores can be uh, submitted. So for official TOEFL exam scores, they can only be sent electronically um, to remove the ELP hold, and they must be sent to the school, to our school code 6870. Official Duolingo exam scores can also be accepted electronically. And those scores must be sent electronically through the Duolingo website, and, they, and you must list UH Graduate School as a receiving school. Official IELTS exam scores can only be accepted if they are mailed directly to our office and must be sent directly from the testing agency. I do want to make a note here and say that due to the current situation, there might be IELTS agencies closed and unable to same, send paper copies. If this is the case, the student should make sure they upload the unofficial copy of their exam scores to their application. Once admitted, we can verify these test scores with the TRF number. So if you are experiencing any delays with your paper copies being sent by the testing agency, we recommend that you first make sure that your um, copy of your exam scores 
be uploaded to your application and then afterwards you reach out to the graduate school if that ELP hold is still on your account to let us know so that we can review your documents and let you know if we can remove the English language proficiency hold. You can also visit our website link below to review the requirements for each test. Like our PDV holds, there are some documents that will not be accepted for the purposes of removing the ELP hold. You must submit scores as mentioned, otherwise stated, as mentioned, unless otherwise stated, such as the IELTS exam scores during the fall 2020 semester, which I touched on uh, previously. So documents not accepted for the purposes of removing the ELP hold. Any copies or scans of exam documents uploaded to your application cannot remove the hold. Physical or hard copy exam scores of your TOEFL or duolingo exam scores also cannot be accepted. These are only accepted electronically, so anything hard copy, anything physical, anything that arrives to us by our mailing address cannot be accepted. Scan copies or screenshots of exam scores for your TOEFL or your duolingo exams that you've emailed to us also cannot be accepted. The only way to submit your electronic exam scores for TOEFL or duolingo is to visit the testing agency's website and then request to be sent in those specific ways that I mentioned earlier. Any forwarded emails, so if you request TOEFL or duolingo um, to send your exam scores to you, you cannot forward the exam scores sent to you via email to us, they must come directly from the testing agency. And then IELTS exam scores that are not mailed directly from the testing agency center, such as copies of your exam scores that you may have, cannot be accepted as official. So if you obtained IELTS exam scores and you have a personal copy and you would like to send that via mail, we cannot accept that as official. It must come directly from the testing agency. And then electronic IELTS exam scores cannot be accepted as official at this time. ELP can be waived if a student has earned a bachelor's degree from a higher, from an accredited U.S. institution or an institution at which English is the medium of instruction in the following countries. Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, the Bahamas, the United Kingdom, Ireland, Jamaica, Liberia, Trinidad, the Virgin Islands, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados, Grenada, Turks and Caicos, and, and English-speaking Canadian provinces. To qualify for this waiver, you will need to submit your official transcripts and verify your degree with the graduate school from the countries mentioned above. Please note that at this time, only the countries listed um, here can qualify for this waiver and if your country's medium of instruction is English but is not listed, um, you cannot qualify for this waiver. If you think you qualify for this waiver, please let your program advisor know so that you may contact it so they may contact the graduate school to remove that ELP hold. And in conclusion, um, I do want to touch on a special note regarding COVID-19. For students accepted into the fall 2020 semester, while official copies of your transcripts and certificates of degree are required during your first semester, we will work with students who have degrees conferred late or are unable to obtain official documents due to COVID-19 pandemic, due, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We will post updates regarding the situation as they become available. So I did post a link here. Um, so that you can review our most recent um, COVID updated updates regarding um, the graduate school and any changes that we've made. If for any reason you cannot complete the requirements to remove any of these holes, we ask that you contact us so that you may so that we may work with you and provide further instruction. So you can contact us three different ways. The first way is by sending us an email at gradschool@uh.edu. Um, I've mentioned this email address before, and um, anything that comes through gets filtered and sent to the appropriate person. So if you have any transcript issues, it will be come to a transcript analyst such as myself. Um, so that's just the best way to contact any of any of us. Uh, right now we are working remotely, so email or phone is the best way to contact us. 
You can visit us at the Ezekiel Cullen Building in room 102 on our, at our University of Houston main campus. However, at this time, there are limits or closures due to COVID-19. So we ask that you um, check with us by email or phone to let us know that you're stopping by and we can let you know if it's appropriate for you to stop by at this time. And then by phone, uh, you can contact us by phone at 713-743-713-743-5284. Um, we are working remotely, but our, our phone is still being answered. So if you have any questions, um, you can reach out to any of us uh, via phone as well. I want to thank you all for your time and I hope that you find this information helpful and congratulations on becoming a Cougar. Go Cougs!